Herman, are you excited to form a, film a leopard in the sun? I am. There. In the tree. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous girl. Have you been sitting here for two days waiting for one of us to find you? Yes. Looking at us as if to say, I've been here all along. Where have you been? Isn't that gorgeous? A proper African picture. Leopard in a tree in the sunlight. And of course, it's our beautiful Shungile. And she is truly beautiful. For our new viewers, this is Shungile. And she is 13 and a half months old. So not yet, not yet quite ditched her status as a cub. She's not fully independent. And she really lives up to her name of the beautiful one. Her mother is Karula, probably one of the most, funnily enough, I was thinking about it, she must be one of the most famous leopards in the world, Karula. And a very well-deserved title at that. And this is the fifth letter of her progeny. Uh, Barbara? I think it was Barbara. Barbara, you want to know how long will... Sorry, Megan. What? Bova. Bova? Boba. Boba. Right, Boba. Boba and Boba sound very similar through these radios. Boba, sorry, you want to know how long will leopards spend in trees? It, it's a difficult question to answer because it, it is very much dependent on the weather conditions. On a chilly morning like this morning, um, it would be quite common to find a leopard in a tree because they're avoiding the dew on the grass and finding themselves a nice comfy spot in the sun, warming up and just generally making themselves comfortable. And if they have a kill in a tree, then they'll spend more time in a tree. But at the same time, I, th I would say that most of my leopard sightings, or a majority of my leopard sightings, have actually been on the ground. So it's very much circumstantial. On a hot summer's day, finding, one, uh, finding a good position on a nice tree branch with plenty of shade and a breeze would be the perfect spot. Oh, such a big yawn. This is utterly gorgeous. Shame, I'm feeling guilty now. I know Brent was meant to be... I know he was looking for her. We, won the challenge. we, we did win the challenge, Herman. Well, actually, technically, yeah, technically Rex and won it. My stomach is <laughs> Herman wants to know why her stomach is so big. I think it's just the way she's lying, to be honest. I don't, I don't think she's eaten recently. Well, she might have caught herself something. But I think it's just the way that she's lying on the branch. I think there's a, another branch sticking out on her left-hand side that's pushing her stomach outward and bulging. There we go. Ladybugs and Daisy are also saying her tummy is so full, but now she's sat up, and we actually have an opportunity to see just what her belly looks like. And I don't think she's actually that full. I think it was just the way you lie. she was lying. Where are you going? Which way are we going now? Where's your brother? Somewhere around here, I imagine. Oh, she's so beautiful. Here we go. Beautifully done, Hammond. <laughs> oh, let's go and catch up with her. She's vanished into the grass. Goodness. Hello, Branch. Sure, this grass is so long. I can see her wandering off there. Just see the tip of her little white tail disappearing off. Don't vanish, girl. Otherwise, we will definitely have to get the walk team in. On to the termite mound. 
There we go. That helps a lot, Shongile. If you could just stay there, that would be marvelous. All right, I'm just gonna reposition her, man. Let's go up to her. Now, for our viewers that are relatively recent arrivals to our live safaris, you'll notice that I'm driving over one or two trees as we go along. And we're very careful about the trees that we drive over. So it's, we pick the species carefully. Oh, this is a little bit of a narrow spot. Okay, let's, we'll make it work, we'll make it work. Uh-oh, an elephant. <laughs> There is an elephant over there. Hello, big girl. Where did you come from? Shungile, have you been stalking elephants? Well, you're a great elephant hunter. Let's reposition, get them both in view. 